10 square feet of uh, coral per year, which is a huge amount when you think about it. So when you have a reef that has hundreds of cots on it, it can do a lot of damage really quickly. And that's what they have their very dubious distinction for is they are reef killers. Yes, so they yeah. eat coral. And um, again, they are natural and they actually uh, serve an important purpose because they are um, inclined to eat the really fast growing branching corals. Um, and that actually, um, when there's just a few cots, they eat some of those fast growing branching corals and it actually gives the slow growing massive and bolder corals uh, space to grow on the reef. So real estate is really hard to come by on a reef. But when you have too many of them, it can be devastating. Now, I remember when I took marine bio in high school, there was some stat that they always threw out there mm -hmm. pertinent to the crown of thorns mm -hmm. starfishes. They said was it, it takes like two years for every centimeter of, or is it seven years for every centimeter of coral to grow back? It really depends on the species. Um, so it's highly variable. Like the branching corals, you can have 10 centimeters of growth per year, but some of these slow growing um, and crusting corals grow really, really slowly, mm -hmm. you know, a centimeter per year maybe. So it's, uh, it takes a long time when they're getting um, predated upon so quickly. And then conversely, the crown of thorn starfish breeds at a insane rate. And yes. You, you look down there, it's like, yes. you know, you may go over to like the UOG yep. marina, I'll be like, oh, there's a few of those things there. You come back three days later and yeah. it's like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so they're, um, they're very fertile, and they, um, the females create a huge number of eggs, millions of eggs when they spawn. And um, the female and the male don't even have to be very close to each other in order to fertilize the eggs. So they just release them into the water, so they have a very high uh, reproductive rate. And if a lot of those larvae, if there's a lot of nutrients in the water, lots of plankton for them to eat, and a lot of those larvae survive, a few years later, you can have a really severe outbreak. So there's no such thing as eHarmony for Crown of Thorns. No, no, no Tinder <laughs> they don't if you're- need it. They don't need it. <laughs> Gosh. So maybe, maybe we are the inferior race in the, in the animal kingdom. Here. You know, they're pretty spectacular animals, actually. They're highly venomous. They're covered in all of these spikes. Um, by the time they become adults, basically nothing will eat them. And um, also, when they eat coral, they're really efficient. So they actually take their stomach outside of their body, spread it over the coral, and suck off all of the living tissue. Which we definitely can't do that. Good thing there's no dating app for them because <laughs> that's, that, that tends to be like a little yeah, on the gross that'd side. That'd be a really messy like dinner date. Yeah. I, well, I guess I guess if you're if you're a starfish, that might be like yeah. That might be cool. But, but so relative to your own work and everything mm -hmm. like that, are you here to say? this is how we combat this known problem mm -hmm. or you know are we gathering data that will be used towards future endeavors yeah so i am a part of the guam coral reef response team which is a collaboration between local and federal agencies um, and mostly involved in natural resource management and we are actually doing crown of thorns removal now so in the past uh, there have been a few different methods for crown of thorns or cots removal so one thing people used to do is they would go out on the reefs and they just cut them up However, what we've learned and what we know about starfish and sea stars is that they regenerate. Mm -hmm. So if you cut a crown of thorn up like a pizza, you've got eight new cots, which we don't want. Um, and people have also, so you can remove them using like long tongs, um, but then you have to dispose of the starfish and you've got a bunch of rotting starfish on the beach. And it's also because- Which smells wonderful. It smells, exactly, it smells yeah. terrible. Um, and they are so venomous, you have to be really careful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you're pulling them out of the reef, you can break the coral and you don't want to do that. So we are using um, a pretty new method. And what we have, um, and it's kind of exciting, it's pretty novel. They've done it in um, a few places, including Australia and American Samoa. We have these modified cattle injectors. So it's the same kind of uh, thing that would, you would use to um, like give a vaccine to a cow sure. on a farm. And, but it has a very, long, um, a very long kind of syringe with a needle on the end. So you can kind of go down the reef and inject them. And what we're using is a solution that's made from ox bile, which is literally just from the um, gallbladder of cows. So it comes from the cattle industry. Again, lovely dinner time discussion <laughs> right here. Um, and it comes in a powder. We mix it with water. You put it in a bottle that's attached to the injector. And each COTS gets one 10 milliliter injection and it kills them within 24 to 48 hours. And there have been lots of studies that have shown that it doesn't hurt anything else in the environment, including other sea stars. They naturally biodegrade and like yep, the, yep. the fish so don't eat them and of, get sick? Or? Yep, apparently not. Okay. So we, um, and it's much quicker, it's much less dangerous. You don't have to pull them out of the reef. You don't have to dispose of them. You just kind of go down and do an injection. So okay. we've done that at four sites on Guam so far this year. Okay, so you've been here since 2015, right? Uh, Three years, give or take. Yeah. Okay. In that time, I'm curious about like the calculus between 
what you know of the, the problem that we mm -hmm. have with, with the crown of thorns starfish before and where we are today. Like, is the problem getting any better, or have we done a decent job at actually controlling your population and saving right. the reef? Well, so um, in the past, uh, cots have been on Guam for a very long time, and in the late 1960s, there were some particularly devastating outbreaks. Um, up at Tangisen, uh, someone, I believe at the Marine Lab, did a study and showed that the coral cover, so the amount of coral on the reef, went down to 1% after a major COTS outbreak, so it really shrank. Um, however, 12 years later, the um, coral cover was back to where it was. So there was a huge amount of recovery. But now um, our reefs are facing a lot of other stressors. So we have uh, degraded water quality from uh, pollution and from development. We have really heavy fishing. So we've lost a lot of the, um, the reef herbivores that kind of eat the algae and mm -hmm. keep the balance between the algae and the coral, like the parrotfish. Um, and we also have had severe and widespread coral bleaching in the last few years. Um, so we had severe bleaching in 2013, 2014, 2016, and 2017. So what's happened now is our reefs have a lot less coral on them. So when we're going out, we're not seeing hundreds or thousands of cots. We're seeing a handful or a dozen maybe. However, because we have less coral now, we need to be even more protective of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're just kind of piloting this approach and uh, we have a community outreach program called Eyes of the Reef Marianas and we train people who go out on the water, so snorkelers, divers, fishermen, um, to identify cots and other reef impacts and then they report them to us. And that's actually how we became aware that there were some ongoing outbreaks um, on Guam is through these community reports that we were getting. And we go out, we find the cots, and we inject them. Yeah, any self-respecting Guam fisherman, you yep. know, water enthusiast and everything knows about these creatures, mm -hmm. can easily spot check them and, and yep. basically say, okay, I know they're here and I yep. know it's that time of year, I know that's not good. Yep, and if you're in the water uh, snorkeling or swimming or diving, for about um, you know half an hour, an hour, and you see two or more, we encourage you to report it. We have a website, eormarianas.org, EOR um, and we do follow up on those reports. We've gotten over 50 this year, and they really have guided our activities as a response team. All right. Well, speaking of follow up, we'd love to have you back and you know talk about the progress of this sure. this project because I mean this is something that everybody knows about, and you know we'd certainly like to keep these things away from our island. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. All right. We will be back right after this, everybody. Please stay tuned. You are watching and you are streaming KM News Extra.